umaga ho sa inyong lahat. Maayong buntag sa tanan. Ni Hama. Ti chong a ta ti. Ah, nanong buri mo. <laughs> All right. Gusto po namin maging relax itong susunod na ito dahil uh, medyo maraming hamon na po ang naganap. At uh, palagay ko naman eh, ang tanong dyan, ang laging tanong sa akin ni Kuya Herman eh, kakasa ka ba? Eh, yan ang tanong dyan eh, sa mga hamo na naganap ngayong umaga, kakasa ka ba? Pero bago ako magpatuloy, isa munang patalastas, mula po sa Global Filipino Movement, meron po kaming ministry para sa mga OFWs, and uh, hindi nyo po natatanong, itanong nyo po. <laughs> Ang Pilipinas po ay humigit kumulang meron na pasar pa alala na ako ng konti ang 100 uh, million na population and we have 10 million overseas Filipinos and you can find overseas Filipino workers in 221 plus plus countries sabi nga ng isang kasama ko Piringan mo mata mo, tumapat ka sa isang mapa ituro mo ang daliri mo pagdilat mo sigurado meron diyang Pilipino. Eh, pastor, da, pastor, dagat ho yan. Siman, meron pa rin. Uh, laging merong Pilipino. Alright. Anyway, uh, pag nagkaroon po tayo ng computation, kung meron 10 million na overseas Filipinos, and if they are married to one wife or one husband, we assume, di ba? Ilan na yon Times two. Oo nga, teramat, salamat, mahusay ka sa music. 20 million, di ba? Tapos, kung sila may dalawang, average lang natin dalawang anak, ilan na yon? 40 million. At kung sila, sigurado may tatay at nana yon, 60 million. What I'm saying is, <clears throat> the majority of our population, 60 to 67 percent of our total population, they are directly related sa mga OFWs. And the sad thing is, we know that yung sad situation ng mga OFWs and their families. Based from the survey that was done, 80 to 85 percent ng OFW family ang lakas ng tendency maging dysfunctional. And the church has a, in a sense, a, one of the reasons why we are existing is to look after them. Isa yun sa mga kadahilanan. And so meron po, kami, meron po ako natitira pang brochure dito na migay na po ako kanina. You can get one. And uh, you can get in touch with us with regards to how we can be in partnership with the uh, uh, Global Filipino Movement in starting the OFWs. Anyway, uh, magpapatuloy po tayo sa si Commander. Magmerienda pa. So we'd like to welcome you sa ating pong strategic uh, planning workshop. So nabanggit kahapon ni, uh, ni uh, Dr. J, si Jason, na hindi naman talaga ito conference na kung saan we are here to learn in a, in a sense, but we are here to do something magtulong-tulong para maabot natin ang ating goal when it comes to uh, raising 5,000 pastoral trainers by the end of 2020. What happened yesterday, Kuya Philip Flores discussed the current state of topic, Philippines and the need for a topic commission. Nakita po na, rinig po natin yon. Jason Tan provided a general roadmap and outlined, outlined the general direction of the strategic uh, summit. Ang ganda po ng matrix na kanyang ipinakita. And I guess, if you are really serious in evaluating yourself and the ministry that you are involved with, plus the other uh, workers that you are with in your ministry, makikita mo kalagayan. And we can be greatly used if we are going to align and, uh, in a sense, get that uh, study, yung pinag-aralan po na yan. And then we have this great message from Dr. Richard, Ramesh Richard. Diba? Were you challenged? Yeah. Okay. Lalo na po habang binabanggit niya yung uh, hindi natin ito ma-accomplish talaga kung isa-isa lang. Eh, no? <laughs> hindi natin mak makukuha talaga siya. So ano, ano ang susunod na gagawin? Right? What is next? Yun ang tanong dun eh. Ano ang susunod? Nakita niyo na po ba yung logo na ito? Ha? Ha? Ano, ano ang sinasabi? Ano yung, ano yung tema ng logo na yan? Ayan. Yan ho ang binibenta namin ni Nixon doon sa labas at mamaya. <laughs> yeah. 
Just do it. Yun din ang challenge kanina. Sabi ko, tapat na tapat talaga. Ah, kailangan, at kailan dapat gawin? Ngayon na. Now is the time for us to really uh, show this, this unity that we are having. Maganda yung ano eh. Kalimutan muna natin yung mga denominational flags natin. Kalimutan muna natin yung mga so-called distinctives na maaring iba ay biblical, yung iba naman ay... Mm -mm. Ayan. Alright, so welcome to Strategic uh, Planning Workshop. I'd like to remind you of the mission statement ng Topic Commission. The Topic Commission exists to champion the well-being of Filipino pastoral leaders by mobilizing pastoral training institutions and individuals. That's you and me. Kayo pong naririto ngayon at yung mga iba pa po nating inimbitahan. The reason why we are here is for us to be mobilized, to do something about it. And second, to uh, have mentoring, uh, to do mentoring pastoral trainers and monitoring pastoral and church health indicators for future strategic decision. What is our faith goals by the end of 2020? Kung titingnan po natin yan, this was already presented yesterday by Jason. We are praying that we're going to have 5,000 pastoral trainers and these pastoral trainers, these pastoral trainers will be uh, um, developing or establishing 5,000 pastoral health communities and from these pastoral health communities we will uh, develop 10,000 pastoral leaders and we do it by looking at our mission, mobilizing pastoral training institutions and individuals, doing some mentoring for them to be trained, and then at the end of the day, at the end of 2020, we'll see this one fulfilled. Yun po yung ating gustong makita. So ang gagawin po natin ngayon ay hahatiin po natin yung ating mga sarili. We'll be dividing ourselves into this group. Group one will be a group of all representatives of formal theological institution. All right. Sino po yung kabilang sa mga formal theological institution? Kayo po ay isang eskwelahan o isang institusyon, formal, at kayo po ay uh, yung binanggit niya, nag-o-offer kayo ng mga degree. Pwede po bang itaas ang inyong kamay? Ayan, parang ayan, Okay. Good, good. So mamaya po, magsasama-sama kayo. Pastor Hill will be giving to you your assignment bago po tayo mag -iwa. But we will giving you some more insights concerning this one. Sino ang ano nila doon, Pastor Hill? Dr. Hill Fernandez will be the facilitator and will giving you the instruction later. Okay? Group 2, Topic Representatives, Luzon. Luzon. Sino po ang mga... Hindi, ano ito eh. Ah, sino po yung lahat ng Luzon? Pwede ba yung tasang kamay? Ayan, parang kokonte, parang kayong bumubuo ng ating uh, ano ngayon. So ang gagawin po natin, nahatiin namin kayo sa tatlo. Tatlong grupo. Okay, yung pong uh, formal education, you are going to anong room nila? Uh, saan man niya gusto, wag lang daw sa Starbucks. Meron po tayong room available, ano, sa Gilead, sa baba. Ayan, okay. okay. Basta mamaya, kayo na lang mag-usap-usap. And then, lahat po ng mga Tagaluson, mamaya lalabas kayo dun sa dining hall. And then you divide yourselves into three. Better if you can divide yourself based on your uh, geographical location. Yung mga taga-Norte, yung bandang Calabarzon, at yung bandang... Metro Manila area, mas o NCR, right? And then, topic representatives from Visayas. Alright, taas mo ang kamay. Ayan, so hanap din kayo mamaya ng lugar. Topic representatives from Mindanao. Well, yung grupo na nariyan. Ayan, okay. And then, non-topic denominational leaders. Uh, maybe this is your first time. You are a denominational. Sino po ang first time na representative ng denomination or para church organization yung parang church daw ayan 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 so meron tayong dalawa tatlo na narito apat lima ano si pastor June Cordoba ang magfa-facilitate niyan andito si pastor June sabi na 
Sabi ni Pastor Jun, ah, napataas-taas pang kamay ko. <laughs> Alright, and the next one is yung uh, all representatives of non-formal pastoral training organization. Uh, uh, mukhang ito lahat halos yun. Ano? Pero if you're an organization like we, ako, si Kenny, we, at uh, saka si Dan, we represent the uh, ano ba yung represent natin? FCL, ano? FCL training. Meron bang katulad ng gano'n yung BEE? I guess meron yan dito. Meron pang iba? Basta lahat ng mga gano'n. Oo. Si Kenny mag-facilitate na. O meron na? Uh, Kuya Philip pala. I'm sorry. Kuya Philip will be. And then, all individuals involved in pastoral training and mentoring. Sabi, you, you do not have any organization, but you yourself, you have your own training uh, program na ginagawa sa mga pastors. Right? So, yun po yung apitong grupo na naririyan. Okay, what is our workshop, the first workshop all about? Okay, it's about developing a corporate goal and timeline. Okay, listen. What do you mean by this? Every group, like for example, Topic Luzon. Right? Topic Luzon. The big question that you're going to answer is, how will I or how are we going to contribute to fulfill that portion on your five thousand pastoral trainers how okay or uh, um, look at that based on your present situation the sort you're familiar with sort okay the strength weaknesses opportunities and threat like resources people materials etc how much can you contribute to fulfill our goals by the end of 2020 so Mamaya po, so during the reporting, pagsasamasamahin natin yon. if we can reach the 5,000 and then maybe do some adjustment later. Right? Um, do you have any question on this? So this is going to be uh, a corporate goal, like for example, yung formal group. Okay? Formal theological trainers. Sila yun. You will be creating your own goal so that you will see yourself uh, adding or contributing para sa fulfillment ng ating goal by the end of 2020. Right? Ganun din ang bawat group na inassign sa inyo. Are you following mga kapatid? Okay ba mga kapatid? Kaigsuon, kapsad, kabalen, kauturan? Okay? And then you might as well look at the smart way of doing it. Right? What's smart? Specific? Measurable? Achievable, uh, re uh, and then time bound. All right. Hindi time bound, huh? Time bound. All right. Le let me remind you of our faith goals. Okay. 5,000 pastoral trainers, 5,000 pastoral health communities, and 10,000 pastoral leaders. All right. See, Nixon will be sharing to us about the participatory workshop process. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Pasolito. Uh, Pastor Lito mentioned about the SWOT. I don't want to assume that everyone knows about uh, the SWOT. Uh, yes, it's strength, uh, weakness, opportunities, threats. Uh, what you do is first to evaluate internally. There should be internal reality assessments. And uh, in, in that kind of uh, uh, assessment, you'll be looking at uh, the uh, internal strength and internal weakness of your organization your church, your denomination, whatever. And then you also do external reality assessment. So ito po ngayon yung opportunities and threats. External po yan eh. Things outside your organization. No? Yung dalawa na yan, malaking bagay po to, to really be able to see the present reality, the situation of your organization. It's quite difficult to uh, put up numbers, goals, without knowing really the SWOT. Otherwise, tayo po ay nananaginip lamang. No? Nananaginip lamang. Hindi po rooted sa reality yung pong ating mga figures. And then sa smart, uh, uh, yun ay medyo madali na yun para sa atin. No? So, uh, okay po yun. Now, I'd like to explain just very briefly ano po ang gagawin natin, the conduct during your discussion. So, I call this the participatory workshop process. You'll be going to different locations with your group members, and uh, I'd like uh, each group to be able to conduct 
yung pong uh, discussion nyo in a way that is fruitful and uh, productive and there should be unity, okay? And uh, para mamaya sa reporting, magiging maganda at maayos po ang ating uh, uh, reporting. Um, it's critical that there should be um, brainstorming that would take place. At kailangan po, we need to respect each member of the group as an equal partner in this endeavor. Ano po? Uh, Iba-iba po yung personalities ng mga tao. Sometimes makita natin mayroong mga dominanteng personality, mga taong opinionated, mga taong gustong lahat ng kanilang ideas ay yung dapat ilagay. Ayaw po natin na ganun. Gusto po natin equal lahat. Okay? So yung sa brainstorming, first, Choose somebody in a group who will serve as a facilitator. But praise the Lord, nag-initiate na po si Pastor Hill. Siya po ay uh, nagbigay na ng mga facilitators for each group. Tama ba, Pastor Hill? Dali natin, ibalik natin sa sa groupings kanina. Gusto ni Pastor Hill na ibalik. Meron daw siyang gagawin. Sana pakiclick mo nga, Pastor Lito. Balik po natin kanina sa seven uh, groups. Yan. Okay, good. First bullet point, okay na po tayo. Um, each group member should be given opportunity to share his ideas uh, to the group. So, depende po sa size ng inyong grupo, uh, divide nyo na lang, no? Uh, facilitator will take charge kung ilang minuto ang ibibigay niya sa bawat membro ng uh, inyong grupo. After all the members have shared their ideas, each one should take turn in reading without any critique or interruption from other members except for clarificatory question. Okay? Nire-respeto po natin yung idea ng isang tao. Hindi po natin dapat i-criticize. Huwag po natin interrupt. You just listen. Kung ano man yung idea ng bawat membro ng ating grupo. And then this idea should first be listed on a draft uh, paper. Meron po tayong Manila paper but that's different. Ito po ay final na for reporting. First, Ilagay niyo muna sa Manila paper yung mga ideas presented by all the members of your group. Uh, the facilitator may do that. No? Ang paglilista sa Manila paper. And then next, once all the ideas are listed, the facilitator go through the list and then subjects each item to discussion. Pag-uusapan at hingin yung consensus ng grupo. I-adapt ba natin to? Tanggapin ba natin itong mga ideas na ito? At yung mga top na ideas ang ilalagay lamang sa Manila paper. Okay? Kasi pong yung idea, imagine if you have 10 members in the group, each one giving 3 or 5. How many ideas? 30 to 50s. So yun pong ilalagay sa Manila paper ay yung mga, mga recurring ideas yung nakikita ng karamihan. Kasi it's possible na yung 50 ideas na yon can be reduced to say 10 or 15 kasi similar lang pala. No? So yung mga ideas na yon ang isusulat sa Manila paper. And it must be clear enough to be seen in the plenary kasi upwesto po natin yan dito. When you return here, we put the Manila papers, sana yung pagsulat ay makikita po sa mga tao sa likod. No? So assign somebody who can write uh, clearly and boldly. Meron ba silang mga may pen? May pen? Malaki, no? Okay. <laughs> Good. Uh, clear and it should be concrete and self-explanatory. Uh, limit po yung paglagay nyo to uh, seven uh, words if possible. No? Try to summarize it. Kaysa yung very... Uh, uh, long yung statements, kukulangin yung Manila paper. So, so do your best to, uh, to summarize. No? Um, and then, pinakahuli po, for the plenary, select a reporter. It could be the facilitator or it could be somebody who wants to uh, report uh, in behalf of the group. And then, uh, read out the report without any critique or interruption from other groups. Sa kanila po yun eh. Hayaan po natin yung kanilang report. Wala pong magtatong, bakit gayto ma? Wala pong ganon. Okay, mga kapatid? And then, uh, may, maybe five minutes uh, of reporting. Okay na po yun. Uh, we are estimating 40 minutes of discussion. When, when you come back, 
uh, maybe we can also give them 30, 40 minutes. If there are nine groups, kasi yung Luzon is divided into three, nine groups, I think yung total, if you can report maybe five minutes for each group, that will be uh, 45. So, limitado po yung oras, wag po masyadong mahaba yun pong ating uh, reporting. Yun lamang po, just to help you in the uh, uh, discussion. Thank you very much. Alright, as, as we continue, let me show you yung ating pong gusto makita before we go to the discussion time. Okay, let me remind you, the, our, the workshop one is about developing a corporate goal. And timeline is basically the same lahat yan, by the end of 2020. Alright, but what we need to see at the end of 2020, referring to your group. Let me show you siguro a... Uh, uh, parang gusto po ang gusto natin makita. Kung tutuusin na uh, medyo, if we want to see a uniform one, this is where we are in 2020, our future situation. We want to see 5,000 pastoral trainers, 5,000 pastoral health communities, 10,000 pastoral leaders. Biskin din na po isulat yan. Pero isusulat nyo dito, write here your corporate goals. Alright? And maybe you'd like to write here your present situation. That would serve as uh, something for our analysis. And then later, this is actually workshop number two. Workshop number two is how are we going to get there? So first muna po, yung, yung understanding where you are right now, right? Understanding where you are right now, assets, resources, all those things, you swat minyo. And then where you want to be or how are you going to contribute to fulfill this one? And we are looking for figures here, numbers here, all right? Meron po bang tanong? Now, kanina, ina-assume na po sa namin kasi mga trainers kayo, you've been to this world, you've been to be smart, etc. And this one is, we think, is simple lang naman po siguro ito. Okay? Meron po ba kayong tanong? Ang, ang merong pong tanong, bibigyan natin ng one-year supply. Alright. Alright? So, 